Okay, I am continuing to work through my final exam for physics, calculus based physics. Uh, the semester is over, so I figured I should go through my questions. Uh, I should also point out that some of these questions are based on questions from a textbook. They're slightly different, but if you've seen them before, I just want to acknowledge that uh, most of my questions are based on the textbook Matter, Matter and Interaction. Super awesome book. Check it out. Uh, also, I try not to give the hardest questions uh, but since it's a final and they have to think about a lot of different things same time. So, it's, you know, if you think these are straightforward, they are fairly, I don't try to make tricky questions. Uh, okay, so let's look at the next question. Uh, this one's focusing on the momentum principle, and I wouldn't tell the students that. They need to figure that out themselves, but in this case, uh, it's good for you. So here's the, the question. I'll read the whole thing, and then we'll talk about it. A squishy ball has a mass of 200 grams and th is thrown horizontally at a wall so that it has a speed of 8 meters per second. During the collision, the ball gets squished through a distance of 0 0.02 meters and comes to a stop. What's the average force it, the ball exerts? What is the average force the wall exerts on the ball? So here's the ball, and it's moving this way at 8 meters per second, which is a vector, but I'm just going to draw it like that for right now. And then it collides with the wall. So first it touches the wall, that's a wall, and then it collapses some, like that, such so that this distance, we'll call that, I'll just call that S, that's the squish distance from the center to the center. That's how far it stopped. Uh, so also I know the mass is 200 grams, and that's all I know, Point oh, and then S is 0 0.02 meters. Okay. So let's think about, I want to find the force the wall exerts on the ball. So as it's stopping, the wall, F wall, I'll write this as a vector, is that way, right? It slows it down. And this deals with the momentum principle. So the momentum principle says that F net is the change in momentum divided by the change in time. Uh, and momentum, if something's moving not too fast, is the mass times velocity. So I can say, I want to, in this case, I do have a gravitational force that's acting on it downwards. That is there. But since the interaction probably takes place over a super short time, I can just ignore that. If you included that in there, uh, if you did this as a problem and you included two forces, oh, actually, it'd have to be, well, two or three, it'd have a downward gravitational force and an upward friction force, then I think you're pretty cool, okay? But if you didn't include that, I think you're pretty cool too. Uh, so let's just say I, I want to find the only force is the force through the wall. So I can say F wall is P2 minus P1 over delta T. So this is the change momentum. This is the momentum right here, right when it first hits the wall, P2, and then the final momentum I'm sorry, P1. The final momentum is here, P2 equals zero. It stopped. So this could be equal to the zero vector minus P1 over delta T. And I want to find F, right? And so you could see that I can write P1 as a vector. P1 is going to be the mass. It's going to be 0.2 kilograms times the vector, times the vector 800. Zero, zero if that's in the x direction. And so this is the way I write my, uh, so it'd be kilograms, meters per second. That's how I write vectors, x, y, z components. And then P2 is equal to the vector 0, 0, 0 kilograms, meters per second. Uh, and, and that's an easier, that is different than the zero, 0, right? 0 vector is different than 0. But the problem here is I don't have time. I have time to do this problem, I have time to spend with you, but I don't have the change in time. And so that makes this not a great example to do momentum principle, but I took this from the momentum principle chapter, so you can do use momentum principle. I'll do it, I'll do this twice, okay? Uh, so how could I find delta T? Well, what if I did this? V average equals delta R over delta T. Then I could say in the X direction, V average X is the change in X over the change in T. I did that because I'm going to solve this for delta T. So if I multiply both sides by delta T and divide by V average X, I get delta T equals delta X over V average X. Now, that I can do. 
I can't do delta R divided by delta V as a vector. You can't divide vectors. So it's best to do that as a component. But what is the average velocity in the x direction? V average x is going to be equal to V x1 plus V x2 over 2. I can just literally average the velocities. Uh, and so this one is 0. So it's going to be 8 meters per second divided by 2, 4 meters per second. So now I know the average velocity. I can find delta t, and I'm going to put that in right there. And then I'm for up here. So I'm going to say in the x direction, f w x is going to be equal to 0 minus p1, which is m v1 x, divided by delta t, which is uh, delta x, which is in this case x, uh, s. I was right at this as s. It's going to be s and then multiply by the average velocity, which I'll say is v x, I put that backwards, it should be, no, it should be v one x over two. So if I simplify this, I get negative one half m v one squared, v one x squared over s. And I'm gonna put that in my calculator. Okay, and I'm going to get that. And that does say that the force is pushing this way. But hold on. This is the end of the semester, and you've done more of the momentum principle. You've done the work energy principle, too. And I said, I made a big deal. Hey, if it deals with distance and you don't know the time, then you should use the work energy principle. So let's do that. And I'm going to calculate that in just a second. So the work energy principle says... The work is equal to the change in energy. And I need to pick my system. In this case, let's pick the point particle system of the ball. This says I'm going to treat the ball as a point, and I'm going to calculate the work as f dot delta r center of mass. So however far the center of the mass of the ball moves will be the work done. And I have to do that because in this case the wall actually doesn't do work on the ball, right? The wall doesn't do any work on the ball because the wall doesn't move. But if I use the point particle system then I can calculate the work even though it's it's kind of cheating. It, it actually works out. And in this case for my system the only kind of energy I'm going to have is a change in kinetic energy which is one half m v two squared minus one half m v one squared, and of course, the, in this case, the change in kinetic energy, uh, the the final kinetic energy is zero because it stops. So, what's the work done on the point particle system? Well, in this case, I have the ball going from here. I don't I don't know how to draw. Let's see. There's my wall. To, I guess I should draw it like this. Let's draw the squishy ball, squished, and then the other ball. There's the center mass, center mass. F is that way. Delta R is this way. Delta R is the, going to be the vector uh, S0, 0, 0. F wall is going to be the vector negative F wall, 0, 0. So F dot delta R fw dot delta r is going to be equal to the x components multiplied by each other, negative s f f plus 0 plus 0. That's how you do the dot product. Okay, so that's my work done. It's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. So I have negative s f wall equals uh, negative 1 half m v 1 squared. And, and the negatives are going to cancel, but that's fine. So then I solve this for F, w, F wall, and I get, that's the magnitude of F wall, technically, uh, and I get uh, 1 half M V1 squared over S, which is the same thing as I got before. That's the same expression. So now we just need to calculate that. So let's put in 1 half 0.2 kilograms. Uh, the initial velocity squared was 8 squared over the distance of, 0 0.02, is that right? So I just need to put that in my calculator. So I'm switching over to Python. Python's the best calculator ever. Uh, and I'm going to enter in my values. So I'm going to say number one, uh, 
S equals 0 0.02, M equals 0 0.2, uh, V1 equals 8. So FW is going to be equal to 0.5, which is 1 half, times uh, M times V1 squared. Squared in Python is star star, not hat. Don't do that. And then divide by S. Now I'm going to print that. Print FW equals FW newtons. Run it. 320 newtons. And that's your answer. Okay, I'll give you the link to this code. I'm going to save it right now. Um, I, I, I could give you a long talk about how Python's awesome too, but I've, I've done that a couple times. So Python's awesome. You could use a calculator. Uh, that'd be fine, but I like Python. Okay, I'll do another problem soon.